Ben said there's a meeting about the Peter Taylor Memorial Fund in Steve's office later. You going to be there? Yes, yeah, the secretary phoned me about it. Listen, the reason that I wanted to talk to you was because of a scene that I just had um, a sister of mine. What's Tracy done this time? It's just a general attitude. I must say she's a very heavy cross for me to bear. How would she be a heavy cross for anything to bear? She um, told me that my father... Got... Thanks. She told me that my father is uh, now hired Zelda Bernstein on a retainer, you know, to be his personal attorney. She's not very happy about that. Well, that is an interesting development, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's a little bit of game playing on the part of my father. Anyway, and so far as I'm concerned, I, I couldn't care less, but um, Tracy is um, very upset about it. Anyway, the reason I wanted to talk to you is I would like, I'd like your opinion. What do you think about her as a lawyer? Well, having sat on the opposite side of the table from her in the Corium mess, I, uh, I don't like her. Yeah. No, I mean, can you offer me an objective judgment on her? Sure, I think I can. She's very capable. I'd say she's a very good attorney. She knows who she is and what she wants. I mean, if you get into the technical legal abilities, I'd say it'd be better to ask Lee or Howard. No, I understand that. I'm just trying to decide whether my father has made a smart choice or whether he's done this whole thing just to spite Tracy. I don't, I don't think I can answer that. If he did make her that angry, I would say it was a, a bad choice because nobody, Absolutely nobody needs Tracy Quartermain as an adversary, believe me. Well, well, I tell you, if she didn't love my father as much as she did, I'm sure that she would have tried to have him declared as being senile for hiring Zelda. Well, that's crazy. I mean. Yes, <laughs> literally, I know. I mean, the man's never been stronger in his whole life despite his heart attack. I'm just saying I wouldn't put it past her to try. Why would Tracy object to Zelda being hired by your father? I mean, it doesn't change her financial position in any way, does it? No, it just, it just irritates her, that's all. I don't know. Maybe I'm just borrowing trouble. I would say, from my experience with Zelda, and from what Lee said, she dealt with a great deal of integrity. She would probably uh, do a very fine job for you, Dad. I hope so. I just cannot understand why Tracy is so intent about seeing these depositions. I mean, what could possibly be so personal? Dr. Quartermain, there's a call for you. Thank you. Will you excuse me, Rick? Sure. <clears throat> Dr. Quartermain? Oh, there you are at last. Oh. No, uh, Monica was just trying to reach me, according to Tracy, but uh, just tried and the line was busy. Did Tracy say it was serious? No, nothing like that. I get a little bit uneasy sometimes, leaving her alone in the house, you know, with just Stella there. Well, Mrs. Fields very competent, isn't she? And Gail and Leslie are on their way over there, and they're both highly qualified doctors. I would say that if anything turned up, that they'd be able to handle it very well. Yes, I know. I guess I'm just being a little bit neurotic. Tell me, doctor, do you have a prescription for that? I wish I did, because I would be a millionaire three years ago. <laughs> I'm trying to find out if you or Laura have heard anything from Leslie. I'm, I'm a little concerned about her. Uh, no, nothing that I know of. Um, wait a minute. Uh, Laura. Yeah? You heard from your mother at all? No, why? Oh, your dad's on the phone here. Why don't you talk to him? Okay. Dad? Uh, sweetheart, I don't want to worry you. I just wondered if you'd had any late report on your mom. No, no. The last I heard, she and Gail went over to visit Monica. Yeah, I know. I tried to call, but the phone lines are down. I can't find out if she's on her way or, or what. Have you called the house? Yeah, there's no answer there. Oh. I don't know what to tell you. I just hope she isn't out driving around in this weather. Oh, I'm sure she's not doing that. You two going to be staying over there? Uh-huh. We're in for the day. Oh, that's good. I'll be in touch. Uh, I'm here at the hospital, but uh, I can't stay on the phone long. The operator told me that they have all kinds of emergency calls. All right, okay, if you hear anything, let me know. I will do that. So long, honey. Bye-bye. Hello, Leslie. Oh. Look, are, are you all right? Oh, yes, my love, I'm just fine. I'm, I'm standing here at Monica's bedside. I have to talk a, a little bit softly. Can you hear me like this? Yeah, but perfectly. Okay, she's in a light sleep, and I don't want to wake her, and I don't want her to hear. But I do want all of you to know what's going on and what we anticipate here. All right, shoot, let's hear it. Okay, I'm going to do this fast, just in case we lose the connection. Monica has been in the early stages of labor for uh, several hours. No intense pain yet. Uh, the contractions are still irregular, but they're starting to get stronger. Is she bleeding? 
a little about we're handling it. Now, we're getting set here for a natural childbirth since we don't have any other choice. I think labor will go on for hours yet because the baby's breech. All right, then maybe the snow clouds will be out there in an ambulance and get through to you. We'll make it top priority. Oh, yes, of course, that's our hope. Oh, and naturally, we're going to need an incubator. Gail and I are going to rig up kind of a homemade one here. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, blood pressure is uh, holding around uh, 120 over 82, and her heart is fine. Leslie, yeah. Alan's here now. He asked me earlier to tell you, if I talked to you, and, and he didn't, that he feels that Monica has to come first. Rick, please tell him that I am determined to save both his wife and his son. Look, I'll put Alan on. Good Lord, Leslie, you can't let Monica die. You've got to promise me that. Alan, I... Leslie? Leslie, hello, are you there? I just barely made it. Operator, operator, please. Oh, it's no use. I've got to try it. Alan, would you let me try it for you? What am I going to do? Dana Hotchkiss, we've got to get her out to the house, Rick. We call Dana Hotchkiss. She's snowbound. We're going to have to rely on Leslie, and she is one fine doctor. Yes, you're right. With Gail backing her up, there won't be anything humanly possible that won't be done. But Leslie is confident that she can bring your wife and your son through. Alan, just try to relax. This isn't going to help Monica or the emergency situation here at the hospital. All right? Okay. Now, the next thing I think we should do is tell Steve about this. He can help expedite getting an ambulance out there to her. You're not going to die. We're going to save you and the baby. I have to, I have to say something. No, Monica, you. don't talk now. You just save your strength. You have to help us get this baby born. Yes. Now, Leslie, Leslie, you've got to so help us. You have to help Leslie, us. We Leslie, can't do it without you. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. With the contraction. All right. You're doing just fine. Hold don't on push. To the breath. Don't push. What? Dear God. Oh, God. She fainted? Yeah. Oh, no. job assisting me in these emergency surgeries. Been a long time since I've had mask and gloves on. Well, that's what I'm talking about. The amount of time that you've been out of the operating theater, no one would know it because of the way you handle yourself. Thank you. I'm glad I could do it. You've been one great help to me. I've got to tell you the truth, though. It didn't take my mind off worrying about Monica. Oh, well, I would. Hey, you got two fine doctors out there with you. Thank God they're there. I don't know if Leslie and Gail hadn't gotten stuck in that storm. She'd have been out there alone with just the housekeeper now. I know. But can I get her through this, Rick? I mean, according to Leslie, she's lost so much blood. <sighs> my God, I don't want anything more, I think, than having my son born alive and healthy, but not at the expense of my wife. And right now, all I can think about is Monica. Look, if anyone can pull her through, it's Leslie. Yes. She's a good doctor. I know that, Rick, but... She doesn't have any equipment. She can't transfuse, Monica. Alan, just as soon as the snow plows get through. Oh, come on, Rick. They've been talking about those snow plows for hours, and they're still not through. Ease up, Alan. Come on. Uh, Dana Hotchkiss phone. She's going to be there just as soon as the roads are clear. And you know Steve got hold of the lieutenant in charge of the road clearance. Mm -hmm. And they haven't heard a word from them either. Alan, sit down here. Man. I can't sit. Yes, you can. You're going to right now. Come on. Alan, you know, there's nothing you can't do if you set your mind to it. Look what you just accomplished in surgery, you know? An emergency. You were like a rock. I'm shaking like a leaf now. Well, that's natural after being under fire. Alan, you're worried. You're worried about Monica and your son. I'm sick with worry. Look, when we do get out of here, will you come with me in the ambulance? Of course I'll be with you. I need you there, Rick. Not only as a doctor. To think that I once accused you of making love to my wife. 
Helen. No, no, please, Rick. I have to say this. I know it's difficult, but please let me. I want Monica to see. I want her to feel that, that everything is right in every possible way. I want her to know that you and I work together here in this hospital and, then, and that we came to help her together. You see, she loves the both of us in very different but in very special ways. I'll be there with you every step of the way. It's terribly important to me, Rick. It's terribly important for, for Monica to know that, well, that I've changed, that I'm not the same man that I used to be. Oh, my God, maybe she's dying, and all I can do is just talk about myself. Alan, you're not. You're talking about Monica and your concern for her. Now, you said something about calling out again, right? Yes, I must. Why don't you do that? I'll go downstairs and see if the lieutenant's called about the roads being clear. We'll meet downstairs after you make your call. OK, fine. All right. Come on. She's, she's coming around. Yeah, we've got to get our incubator set up, just in case. Yeah, I know. Why don't you get Stella? I'll stay with Monica. Oh. I found more candles. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. Let's hope we won't need those. Oh, and I found a flashlight. Oh, okay, terrific. Yeah, Keep this with so you, just well, in case the lights go out again, because I have to ask you to do I something for us. I want you to go downstairs or on, find me a box on. or a basket about like this. It doesn't have to be very big. It's only a three or four pound baby. Get some baby blankets if you have them. If not, tea towels, anything that's soft and has a little bit of warmth to line it with. We're going to make a homemade incubator. Now, now, do you have an electric heating pad in the house? Oh, yes, yeah, she keeps it in this drawer. Perfect. Okay. Um, well, that's not going to do us very good if the power goes out. I'll tell you what, keep a lot of hot water on the stove. And if you have a hot water bottle, fine. If not, get me some plastic containers, any kind, that has a top that we can keep hot water in in case there's an emergency. Well, now, there's a baby mattress in the nursery. Should I put that in the box, that too? That would be wonderful, but you better go right now, because this baby's liable to come any minute. Leslie. Yes, is she coming out of it? No, she's fighting it. Come on, Monica. Monica. Come on, Monica. You got to wake up. Come on, you have to help us. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, Monica. Come on, wake up. Come on. Yes, yes, your baby. Now stay awake and help us. Come on, girl. Come on. You gotta know. Yes, yes. Come on. Come on, Monica. Come on. Now, Monica, you have to stay awake. I'm gonna have to hit you to wake you up. You hear me? You hear me? Come on. Come on. Come on. Stay awake. Come on. Stay with us, Monica. For God's sake, stay with us. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Hello, Dad. Alan, have you heard anything? No, sir, nothing yet. I'm out of my mind with worry. Well, so are we, son. Did you get through to the police station? <laughs> For what good it did. Oh, listen, Dad, they're working as hard and as fast as they can as well, I'm sure of it. Yeah, well, that doesn't lessen the frustration, does it? I'm uh, afraid I lost my temper. Oh? And what happened to the man that was going to keep Tracy and me calm earlier on this evening? Well, he joined the ranks of the nervous wrecks, I guess. I just can't take this feeling of helplessness. I know what you mean. I'm here assisting Rick in the hospital, and all I can think of is that I can't even help my own wife. Yeah. Well, I guess we're all just going to have to pray that Monica and the baby make it through all this. Dad, can I talk to him? Here's Tracy, Helen. Helen? Yes, Tracy. I just wanted to tell you that I... I never wanted anything like this to happen to Monica. I know that. And in my own way, I'm praying for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We just have to believe that Monica and the baby are going to make it, okay? Yep. Can't give up hope. They're in very capable hands. Leslie Webb is a very fine doctor. Alan, I don't suppose Mitch has been around or anybody at the hospital has heard from him. Well, I certainly haven't. You mean to tell me you still haven't heard anything Alan, at all? Alan, I haven't heard a word from him, and I'm so worried. We both have our worries tonight, don't we, little sister? You bet we do. Alan, Daddy wants the phone, okay? Okay. I love you. Bye. Bye. Alan, I guess you can see how quickly uh, Tracy closes ranks when the family's in trouble. I'm speaking to both of you. I just hope this truce remains in effect when hopefully life is once again on the upbeat. Yes, sir. And we've got to hold a positive thought for Monica and our son. And with God's help, you'll be holding your grandson that you've been praying for for so long, sir. Well, I'll, um, I'll call the police again, see if I can shake them up a bit. Oh, listen, Dad, they're doing whatever they can, really. I'll tell you what I will do. I'm going to check with Rick and see if the snowplows are any closer to the house, then. Yeah. Well, uh, please keep in touch, Alan. Let us know what's happening. You know, Tracy and I are climbing the walls out here, wondering and worrying. I will. And Dad... 
Tell Tracy thanks for caring. I will, Alan.